Hey everyone, my name is Sierra Flores and I am the Everyday Educator. A lot of people have been asking me my preference on Nearpod versus Pear Deck because both are Google Slides add-ons and you know that I am a Google girl through and through. So in this video, I'm going to break down those differences, Nearpod versus Pear Deck, and let you see what the student experience is like so that you can decide for yourself which one do you want to use as we move into online learning. So first we're gonna start with the teacher view of Pear Deck. I'll flip it over to student and then bring you back to teacher one final time. That way you get to see kind of what it looks like as a brief overview. And then we'll do the same for Nearpod. So to start, you need to make sure you have the Pear Deck add-on. And so to get there, you'll click add-ons and then you'll go to get add-ons and obviously you're gonna type in Pear Deck and install it. And so mine's already installed and so I'm gonna come over, open Pear Deck add-on, which mine is already open as you see here. And so I now have, op these are the options that I have to enhance my slides. So you'll see here, it says students draw anywhere on the slide. I just clicked draw and then it automatically add updated my slide. And so here is a section I said to enter a number. And then as I go through, you can see all the different things that I'm having my students do. This one's open-ended. Then I have a drag and drop, which came um, here, draggable. And then I'm gonna end it with a multiple choice question. And so that's how I created it based on the teacher side. And I just went straight through my Google Slides to do that. Now for the student side, they, I'm gonna press start lesson, and then it's my choice if I want them to do it along with me, or if I want them to do it on their own, which would be student paced. That's my choice, all right? I'm gonna do student paced today, just to give you a quick example of what it looks like. So this is what students see when they're in Pear Deck. And so I can click here, I can highlight, I can draw with a pencil, I can write um, whatever number I want to. And if I want, I can also type in text. So I can type in text there, all right? So I'm done with this question. I'm gonna go to the next one. This is a number, so I'm gonna enter in a number. And obviously your students are gonna go through this and they're actually going to try and focus. I'm just giving you a quick example. I'm being a really bad student right now. Forgive me. All right. For their documents, just make sure that when you're linking it, they're logged into their student accounts so that they have access, all right? But for as far as the website goes, you can put literally whatever website that you wanna put. Um, it could be a video, link to a game, literally whatever, and it'll take them here. Next is um, an open response. And so let's see, I'm a reader. That's my answer. Moving on. You'll see here I'm on slide five of six. So this here, I'll notice that there is a pair of headphones down here. That tells me it's time to listen. So I'm gonna press these headphones and then see what the directions are. So I'm gonna drag it right here. Hold your horses. All right, five of six, moving on slide six of six. This one is multiple choice. And so if I need to make this bigger for me to be able to read it a little more clearly, I can do that. And then I just click it one more time and then that shrinks it down for me. So now I see my answer choices. All right, so there we go. I answered it and I'm good. I'm done now because I'm on slide six of six. Now, flipping it back to teacher view. So as the teacher, I'm going to go into my Pear Deck and then I'm going to look at my students' responses. And so right here, I see what my kids wrote. And so I can give them a grade on this if I want. And I can come here, I can star this answer if it's really awesome. I can leave feedback if I want. And here, I can hide this response if I'm like, whoa, this is inappropriate or like any for any other reason. I'll go on. This one was what the number looks like. You'll see with the correct, you can select the correct answer. And then you'll be able to um, find out what do your students know. Moving down here, my website, there's not really much you can do on the website. 
Um, this way, I can see people who responded. And then I can put a star here because I like this response. And I can comment back on it. And this will go directly to that student, OK? Um, and so for you to see what the drag and drop looks like, it's just one image. And it shows me where people dropped and who it was that dropped that there. Um, lastly, this is what the multiple choice looks like. And so if you have a class of students, then you can see what everybody said and you can see who said it, okay? Now, one other really cool thing that you can do at the bottom here, you can stop student paste if you want and you can also just end it, all right? And so if I wanna end it, it's done, it's over, yes, I'm sure. Or if I wanna leave because I'm done with it but I want them to continue, I'll click that as well. But I'm going to end it. Um, this was Practice Pear Deck. Now look here, Publish Student Takeaways. This is awesome because it's going to, I'm going to save and end my session. And so the public or the takeaways, this is linked to my Google Drive. And so if I look here, I can share this link with my students or I can share it directly to Google Classroom. All right. But what this is, um, and I can do it student by student, but it gives me a copy of the slides that I just presented. It gives me a copy of those slides, and then I am able to take those and leave feedback directly on those slides so that I can see, um, have, a pro have progress, show their progress um, on that specific lesson. And that's really great if you want to engage parents with um, their ch children's learning, okay? So that's the short version of Pear Deck. Now we're going to flip it over to Nearpod. You'll see that I have the exact same set of slides, and I did this straight from Google. Go to Add-ons, Nearpod, and I'm going to open up Nearpod, and you'll see that I have all these options down here that I can use. And right away, you are going to notice um, that my menu is not popping up because I've already started this lesson in a previous session. So I'm go instead I'm going to edit this lesson and here you will see all of the features that I can use. Now right off you're gonna notice there's a lot more features in Nearpod than there are in Pear Deck. And that is absolutely true. So many features. And I, whenever I want to go make a slide, I will just select from here what is it that I want and so for example if I really wanted to put in a quiz I'm just gonna click quiz and then it's gonna let me edit that slide and then I can to put in my entire quiz here again I'm not gonna go through um, all of the creation process of Nearpod that's a that's a tutorial for a different day but this is just a super quick overview of what it looks like when you add in things to your flip or sorry to your nearpod but i'm done so now i'm going to click save and go to nearpod and so if you see here this is already this is saving for me and so after it finishes i'm going to take the code because i want my students to be able to use this lesson in their Google Classroom. I could put this in Canvas. They now have an integration where they put it in Zoom. I want to do student paste. And so I'm going to copy this code. And now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to pretend like I'm a student. And so now I'm going to paste in that student code and join the lesson. All right. What's my name? Sierra. Flores is my name. Join the session. And so now you see um, fill in the correct numbers. All right. So here I can start typing um, 34. I'll just put that number in. And I can move this anywhere. I can resize it if I want. And then moving over here, I can dr literally draw if I want to. And then you'll see that I also have more options at the bottom if I want to add an image. All right. And so now I'm going to go in and submit that. Now I'm moving to the next question.
This is an open-ended question. Solve the problem by using a strategy of your choice. Now, you'll notice that in Pear Deck, it was different because I could actually see the slide. Here, all I can see is white boxes. So what I did was paste in an image of that slide so that way they kind of get the feel for it. But with this, you can include images, you can include video, audio, um, it's your choice. But I'm gonna enter, I'm gonna put the number 67. There we go, make sure you hit submit. With this, again, I have to be logged into my student account. Right now I'm logged into my personal account, so that's why it is not working for me. Go into the next slide. And so you can already see the differences in these. And so um, with Pear Deck and Nearpod, yes, there's a lot of similarities, but I want you to look and notice the differences as well, because those really matter. So with this, the kids are going to log in with their student Google accounts, and it's going to take them to a brand new Flipgrid, and they can um, go ahead and post there and um, share their videos. And then as I continue, this one is kind of like the app Padlet but it's called collaboration. And so I can share my thoughts here. These are my thoughts and post. So kids can click like on that if they want as well. All right, and I can also include an image if that's something that I wanted to do. And then this is matching. And so match the non-literal phrase to its meaning. And then this has an immersive reader. So if I have trouble or if I need it to be read to me, I press that button. And then it's going to take me to a new screen. And I also have a tutorial on this as well if it's something that you need. All right. I'm going to press play. And so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do exactly what it said. It's raining really hard. It's rain means um, it's raining cats and dogs. He ate way too much food. His eyes are bigger than his stomach. Well done. All right. Continue. So this is through Nearpod 3D. I can literally look at this shark and all of its cool features. I actually really like this, it's cool. Um, moving on. And remember, this is what the student sees, okay? And so since I am a student, I'm able to look at all of these features, all of these functions, and I can do that if I choose. Are you going to subscribe to the Everyday Educator? Yes, I'm already subscribed, or yes, I'm subscribing right now. Yes, I'm already subscribed. Next. And so um, this just goes on and on. There are so many cool features of Nearpod. But from the teacher perspective, I do want to show you that very briefly, the teacher perspective. And so for that, I'm going to click here. And I'm going to, I can share that with teachers if I want this whole presentation. You can share it with your teachers. They can copy and edit it. Anyway, I'm going to go down to reports. And so this is the one that I want to look up. And so I'm going to click in there and it's going to show me here all of my reports. Again, I'm not going to go over every single detail here because I'm going to make a tutorial specific to Nearpod. But this is just a brief way for you to look at the data so that you can see um, what you can kind of make your choice on do I like Pear Deck or maybe I like um, Nearpod a little bit better. So what did you think? Pear Deck has a lot of really great features, but so does Nearpod. And so you're honestly not going to know what you truly prefer until you get in there and start messing around. So go to your Google Slides click the add-on and get both Nearpod and Pear Deck and start playing around with them so that that way, before school starts, you'll already know how you can use these in your classes. So if you enjoyed that, if you liked it, if it helped you in any way, please click like on this video. Then I want you to subscribe so that that way you're always in the loop with my upcoming tutorials.